Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the Digital Today's podcast. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And we are joined by a third today. Please welcome to the show, Gilles Thibault. Hey, everybody. Hi, Dave, Ron, and especially the community. It's always nice to be around you guys and chatting. Good evening. It's always a pleasure to have you on. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Mm-hmm. And uh, there is a reason why he's on uh, today, Ron, not just because he's an Apple Hall of Fame and not just because he has the most organized and card collection in, in uh, tabletop <laughs> history. <laughs> not only because he does play, his... he's streaming some great golf games and things like that, but... Uh, it, it's because of his undying love for the Montreal Canadiens, and it's about time you're in the you morning in this set. He, he's got a Canadian shirt on right now. I can see it. It's yeah, the, the no. M. Expo. Andre Dawson. Oh, that's Expos. I uh, thought it was Canadians. Uh, Gary Carter. Oh, Gary Carter, number yeah, eight. Yeah, Gary Carter, number eight. Oh, okay. So it's it's Montreal something. Okay. Montreal something. Right? Way to be observant, Gardner. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Tebow's on the show this week because it was him that suggested uh, in our face group, Facebook group, uh, the topic of gaming paralysis. Well, what yeah. happens when you when you have the time and just you. You freeze up and you don't play the games. And I'm going through that right now, and I'll talk about my little story as we get going. But I, I talked to Ron, and I says, Ron, I says, uh, Tebow had a, a great topic. We should have him on since he suggested it, and maybe he can explain more what he was talking about. And yes. so so we will get to that today. But anyway, we need to get to uh, ways to get a hold of us. Well, uh, this is episode 187. It is 187, Gaming Paralysis, we shall call it. Which, which means there's a little bit of highway somewhere between um, the Tappan Zee Bridge and the Canadian border that never got built. That would have been Interstate 187. I did not know that, but that's, there you go. that's why you are here. Okay. <laughs> I've been over that Tappan Zee many times, by the way. I bet you have. Oh. Anyway. They, they've uh, redone it the last few years. It's a little bit better. You're not going to fall in the Hudson anymore. Yeah. We, I, and a true story, true story. Uh, one of my uh, my good friends at the time that used to do the, the color commentary, we would travel down to New York and Philadelphia and all these other places, and he has a fear of bridges. No joke. That, that, that's a that's a healthy. That was a healthy bridge to have a fear over. Yeah, that yeah. bridge was bad. Yeah, the GW was worse, but the Tappanzee was tough. And so, he um he used to take like Ativan and stuff like that when we went over the bridges. Oh, wow. just to realize it was bad. Yeah, he used to put towels over his head. He couldn't look out the window. It it was bad, and um. And I remember we went there one time, and a lot of times we got there at odd hours so we could fly right over it. But there was one time it was kind of busy, and he pulled over, and we waited for like 20 minutes. for Just to stop and go? Just, just for, that yeah, just for traffic to kind of get a little better. Then he's like, go. He's like, go here, go here. And the guy driving was like weaving in and out, and I'm in the back seat, like in the crash <sighs> position. Like, you know, and, but he was so, so fearful of bridges. It wasn't even funny. And when we did the gig on ESPN3 down at Disney in Florida, uh, he wouldn't fly. We took a train we took a train from boston to florida and it took he was like mr t yeah <laughs> yeah like, like that john madden, john madden. Yeah, yeah yeah something else there but yeah so uh, i've been over that tapestry many times at one time we were white knuckling as he was like f- flipping out oh my goodness yeah. did you see where um the madden cruiser is being parked in canton for permanently no oh, wow. that this week the outback cruiser his last his last Madden cruiser. Nice. Is going to be a, a exhibit at the Pro Football Hall of Fame, as it should be. Did he ever fly? Oh, yeah, was it, awesome. it, eventually, did he yes. fly? He flew once for CBS, and he was so afraid, and and um, they worked it out. He did Amtrak for the first few years, and then someone said, oh, sponsorship idea. And that's how the Madden cruiser came to be. And so they would just make sure that he would never be too far between game right. assignments. Oh, that's neat. but but uh, but yeah, especially when he was a coach with the Raiders, they had to fly. Nice, you know, on the West Coast. Yeah. If they were down in San Diego, obviously you could right. drive that. But if you were in New York one week in Dallas the next, yeah, you had to. Yeah, it takes several days to drive across the country. I did it once. It was a long time. There's <laughs> a story that um, he did a test game his first year with Pat Summerall, uh, before he and Summerall were partners, and it was the test game. In Tampa, it's the first year. It was the seventy-nine bucks. So it was the first year that Tampa was was good, and so it's Summerall and Madden. And the old press box at the Sombrero looked was very steep and looked right down at at the field. 
And Summerall looked, took one look at Madden, and Madden, of course, was a big gentleman, and is just sweating profusely and as nervous as all anything. And Pat's going to himself, he'll never make it in this industry if he's doing that. And then Madden told him during the commercial, I'm so afraid of heights. Oh, wow. And so, and so, yeah, so it almost stifled him before he began his television career. Did you see uh, – we'll, we'll get on to the show in a second here, but uh, <laughs> did, did you did you see the um, – it was the hockey announcer that that took the cell phone footage of how he had to walk to the booth, and he and he went up the elevator on one side and walked across the catwalks yes. over the scoreboard because for some reason they didn't have elevators on that side of the rink. There's a guy that does an OHL podcast. I believe he's the play-by-play announcer for the Kitchener Rangers, and he will go through and show off arenas, and some of them are just gorgeous and ancient. But all of those press boxes, it's catwalks, it's narrow stairwells. It's a good thing yeah. I never wanted to be a hockey announcer because you it's like a grate. You're calling a oh, game yeah. over an open grate. Yeah. And you know why they do that? It was to go back to, because that's what it was at Maple Leaf Gardens when Foster Hewitt started doing Maple Leaf games. And so because it was the great Foster Hewitt, when they built in those press boxes, that's what they did. Oh. <laughs> that is nuts. I yeah, I don't, I've I've been up on the garden, but I took an elevator all the way up. I wasn't walking across catwalks. Oh, so <laughs> so the press box at the garden wasn't you know on a rusted out. I I, I I was only at the new garden. I wasn't, over the ice. I wasn't at the original one, so I have no idea. But it was oh, that, that one. one used to hang over. That was nice. I used to hang over the the you know whole hang over. But that was a good. Good place to watch a game. Uh, anyway, ways to get a hold of us here. <laughs> I know with a roundabout way. Uh, DigitalToDice.com is the uh, website. 978-751-DICE is the dice line where you can send us a text. DigitalToDice at Yahoo.com is the email. Over on Facebook, Facebook.com slash groups slash DigitalToDice. And that's digital T O dice on all these and uh if you'd like to become a patreon and support the show for either two dollars a month or five dollars a month head over to patreon.com slash digital to dice and right now we are live for all of our five dollar patreon members in the club level they got an invite to watch the show live we do some behind the scenes things and um some other extra videos for them and tonight is one of them so they got to see a whole bunch of chit chat they got to see us uh, uh put our makeup on and our faces on and the whole bit <laughs> And uh, if Make that if, if if seeing Ron get get makeup put on is not worth five dollars a month, I don't know what is. You know what I mean? A little glare in the forehead, Ron. You got a little pat that down. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, because that hairline hasn't receded back far <laughs> enough yet. Yeah, I was I did a play my senior year of high school. And so few, they didn't make us up for any of that, but we got to the night where we're on the first time. And the the woman teach English teacher that was our director, okay, Ron, it's time to put your makeup on. I'd never worn makeup in my life. I said, what do you mean I got to wear makeup? It's like, I look odd enough. Makeup isn't going to help my f- I mean, uh, I've, I've got a face for radio and a body for a newspaper, okay? Uh, what do you mean? And, yeah, they put the pancake makeup, and the, because I played an older person, they had to give me lines, as in makeup uh, lines, wow. to make me look older than I was. But, yeah, You were a cute little kid, there. I see your pictures on your Facebook, Raw. You. You were a kilo eight year old kid, you know. So I, I, all lies, but thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all righty, so let's get into uh, episode uh, one hundred and eighty seven. We'll start off with um, what we're playing. Actually, should we talk about that weather? That's really uh, bad. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's how, how's the year down where you are today? How's the year it's, where you are? It's getting bad. Tomorrow's today was bad. Tomorrow's supposed to be worse. Oh. And uh, it's I could see it coming. It's like the weirdest look outside. You know, it's. It's not like uh, rain. It's just something weird in the air, you know? Oh, it, yeah. it, it literally looks like I posted a picture. Someone posted a picture of City Field, and I posted a picture of Yankee Stadium on my Facebook page yesterday. And it literally looked like if you were wearing sunglasses and didn't take them off, that's what it looked like, that dark, amber, hazy. It's got a smell It, it looked like Mars. Yeah. It really yeah, did. Yeah. It did. You know, it and, did. And, and I saw some pictures today on YouTube. I'm like, holy crap, this is really really bad yeah, the, I, we don't have yeah. it bad here it said our air quality was bad but when i looked at the map it's it's coming out of canada but when it mm-hmm. gets to the coast it kind of stops right before the coast so i'm about a mile from the coast so i think the ocean and the breeze from the ocean is what's saving yeah. us yeah. I, I the really combination do. of that we've hit because the, there's been two fires the quebec one which is what ravaged new york and metro area yesterday and uh the pollen 
is really messing yeah. up here. The first fire oh, was yeah. in Nova, Nova Scotia, and I woke up Saturday morning to the smell of what I thought was someone smoking meat. Now, I knew there was a, a, a wildfire, and it wasn't someone roasting meat. It was Bambi Flambe. It was the smell from, from that. Oh. Thankfully, we're not getting anything too bad from this Quebec fire. I could smell it yesterday when I left the house, but no, nowhere near as bad as what people have. I, I, I saw yesterday that 90 million people were under a poor air quality. Oh, yeah. Yesterday. And so I heard there's one in California too. So it's like getting it from the top and from the west. Well, that's what I. That's what my on my stream today. My friends who live on the west coast, Scotty Howard and a couple others, said, "Well, that's what we get in the every fall." Oh, really? Between the forest, the, the wildfires oh. in California and British Columbia. It's like wow, oh, man. So yeah, well, wishing for the best for you guys. I've lucked out so far, and I'm kind of hoping we still do. But yeah. yeah. And when you can't go outside because it's so bad, I mean that just is terrible. You know, it really is. So, all right, let's get to what we're playing now. And um, hang on a sec. i got to play the music. All right, let's start with our guest, Tebow. What have you been playing? Oh, I think, like the theme of the show, I've been, I've been paralyzed. <laughs> and it comes up, so it happens sometimes. Um, usually it happens between, like, uh, I'll play blocks of my project, my big, long baseball project. But when I put that away and uh, the desk is clear, it's uh, it's like it just comes over you that that like paralysis. So I know we're gonna get into it, but um, one of the things I did is uh, that hockey um, project I started this week with. Um, oh, that was neat. Talk- yeah, NHL '94. I'm with you, Dave, on the old video games. Um, yeah, I spent a lot of time playing that. You know, just. You could almost like still do those little moves with your like Sega controller in your Even hand. And I can play that yeah. one. Yeah, and uh, so much time on that. And I love, you know, obviously, nice Canadians. And but one of the challenges with those hockey games is like a uh, full season replay seems almost like impossible. Oh yeah, you know? yeah. It, it just seems like a, it's an insurmountable mountain, like no one could ever do or something. But um, so what I figured out a way to try it. I'm gonna take a plunge at a full season replay. I like full season replays because I get the stats and everything. It's I get fun the watching them progress. I've never finished yeah. one. I did I did a full season replay for the California Seals in shootout yeah. hockey. Now, that's a 15, 20-minute game. And I didn't keep right. stats. I just kept scores. And then I started, I don't know if it was 70, 71 or not, with shootout every game. Again, it's a 15, 20-minute uh-huh. game. And it was yep. fun because I started keeping stats, and I was putting it into the Strat Hockey Utility. That's how yeah, I was keeping yeah, my, yeah. My, my stats. It was a little awkward, but it worked. And I got through October, and I got to the first week of November. I did. Oh, wow. And it was going. It was pretty good at seeing, you know, Phil Esposito, the top of the scoring race, and Bobby Orr is the most assist, and Tony Esposito is the best goalie. And it, it, teams have only played like eight or ten games to that point. And, and that was probably a year ago since I've gotten back to it. It just was like, wow, this is going to be a while. And then, you know, then, then the things creep up like – I got to play another game that I don't want to play, and I'm only in November, and I got to keep the stats, and I got to get the utility, put in the stats, make sure yeah, it's correct. Yeah. And seriously, it was it was that type of attitude that I was like, oh, I yeah. don't know, I don't know. It causes it to like fall the wayside. I've been there before, yeah. especially with that. When, you, when it gets too difficult, when things get too like, eh, is it worth the time and effort? Yeah. yeah the no. only one I did do. Uh, was I did 1970-71 with final score from Downey. Mm-hmm. I did every game. And I printed out the schedule, and then I would I would go into work at the rink when I was scorekeeping, and mm-hmm. I'd, t- I'd take all the score sheets, and I would and I would set up the game. So it would be like, you know, offense, offense, defense, defense. Uh-huh. Here's their final number minus the home and away rating, and here, here's their final rating for the game, all set to roll dice. And so uh-huh. I would get 40 or 50 games in a row ready to roll. And then I would come home and I'd roll them at night and get my scores. And then I'd set uh, up the next 50 games. And I did the whole season that way. Wow. I really did. I did the whole season. <laughs> and it come out pretty darn close. There, was, there were some teams that the goals were exact and the uh, points were exact. 
Yeah. Wow, that's the only, amazing. Staggering. The that's only thing staggering. that the only thing yeah. that was different was uh, the middle of the pack. I think in the West, I had a team, the third and fourth place team switched, and then in the East, the fourth and the fifth switched. But aside from that, like some goals four were on, some goals against were right on, like wow. exact. The, the points scary. were pretty close. Scary. It was Did scary. You... That's a quick play game, and and that nailed it. You know, and then I played yeah. the playoffs. Quick play games. Yeah. Quick play games don't do a good job with extremes either. I'm not sure if there were many extremes no, not in that, that year. season. No, not but, that year. Yeah, they either yeah. overperform or underperform. Yeah, and it was just no, final was... score, but and it was yeah. a quick play game, and that's the only time I've ever done a full season because again, you, it, the time factor and this and just even with a 15 to 20 minute game, after a month, I was like, oh my god, really? I, I want to play something else. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's... But I'm interested to see yeah. what you're going to. So what what are you going to yeah. be playing that with now? Well, playing Apple hockey, uh, so it's kind of like Dave with his, or not Dave, Ron with his uh, um, action PC. So it's like uh, maybe like two, three games. We actually, I'm going to try to do a game of every day, like at least the one feature game, and then the rest is going to be down the ultra quick hockey. And I've been enjoying that. Cause one thing about the ultra quick hockey, like you say, uh, I watched your video a um, couple times when I was out my walk. Your old video you had, I think it was like two years ago, you might have did that. Mm-hmm. And I did the full blown. You get the stats, the time of the goal, and everything. Oh, you can and, get everything with Ultra Quick. Yeah, and it's kind of fun then recreating it. So when you're all done, you kind of look back and say, "Okay, well, Edmonton tied it up in mm-hmm. the third, and wow, this goal was big." And then I roll. <laughs> so I'm going to uh, use that. I just uh, I like to have a project going. So I want to play Apple hockey. I'm going to say, "Okay, I'm instead of like a one off, you know, that kind of doesn't mean anything." Uh, I'll have something and say, okay, well, I'm going to play a, a day of this uh, NHL 94 project I'm starting. So that, I'm play, still playing baseball. I got my steroid era going. I'm up to uh, almost the all-star break in 93, American League. So that's coming up. I'm in a draft league, too, with APA, with a bunch of guys I know from the convention. And we have, uh, we're up to 1981 season. Oh, nice. And uh, what we it's been going on since 1960, the 60s baseball season. So this is like the 21st year of it. Oh, wow. Um, I've been in it since 1974 season. And uh, it's a total draft league. So every year, like the, the rookies of the year, like next year, uh, like Gwyn, Mattingly, and Boggs are like rookies in the 82. So I'm, I'm probably going to get my teams like terrible. They're in last place, but... Uh, I got 10 games to roll of that. So we report the stats by email, uh, spreadsheets. And there's a commissioner. He uh, compiles everything, sends out standings. And we said it's only uh, 10 games a month for four months a year. So it's old school. Crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It's old, old school. school. And for, yeah, yeah. ten games a month with, especially if you use the. Well, you use you like to use the mass. I was going to say with the basic, that shouldn't be a big big. Deal. Oh, it's a basic league. Yeah, okay. it is a basic league. So yeah. uh, it's it's pretty fun. You know, we send instructions into the month, like we send them out to the two opponents we're playing that month, and uh, it's it's a good time. So, so, so you, you roll your home you roll your home games. Is that it? Yeah, we roll our home games. Uh, so some guys, like two guys, will send me the instructions for our games, like five games a piece. And I'll send them my instructions and rotation. And very the, the theme is a very minimal instructions. It's pretty much here's my lineup, here's my pictures. Yep. You know, that's it. And uh, it's it's fun to see guys like play your guys and like report the stats of your guys you, you put together. And and uh, it's a good time. There's a lot of guys I know in person you know, from it. So. How, how do you figure out the team you're playing against, what to do? Uh, there's a schedule we get. So uh, what we, we actually we're not allowed to target pitchers. Like, I'm going to start my against your A. Uh, you just have to, like, set this is my rotation, and that's the way. And then they send you their rotation. and you But, just but how do you away. know, like, if you do any substitutions, a pinch running, a pinch hitting? or That's kind of like the theme of this. Uh, it's, the, the guys are old school. We, we kind of like to keep it real simple. It's actually called the basic app of baseball league, Bad Babble. Um, so, but there is some minimal instruction. We actually do have some guys who say like, uh, put this guy in the eighth, if I'm winning, put this guy, mop up guy, if I'm losing. And it's uh, it's kind of fun watch having these guys instructions in front of you saying, oh, okay, so he wants to put in this reliever if he's down to and pinch run this guy or pinch hit this guy. So oh, that's going to, yeah, that's going to take us up to the uh, convention coming up down Atlanta, uh, uh, third week of June, so I'm heading down there. Oh, just a couple of weeks, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll be down there. That's like a blast down there. So we do a lot of head to head. Like so, a lot of stuff we do is all 
like usually solo, but that's like the four days a year I'm, I'm playing face to face with people, and it's really fun. nice. So, and Dave, I think you mentioned something about going to one of those gatherings about like how you said you wouldn't play in a tournament and like you'd walk around and see you know what's talk to the guys. That's like my favorite part of the whole thing is just meeting new people who like this community. You know, you meet guys how they do games, how they like to play games, and different things, how they keep score, how they hold their cards. I mean, just all kinds of different ideas you get. I Well, I've always just been kind of the the guy that reports and takes pictures in the whole bit. It's just kind of what I've yeah. done, you know, because even yeah. when I did my, my, the old hockey days back in the day, you know, I'd be the ro- guy going around interviewing people and getting the stories and reporting back on it. I wouldn't be the guy actually doing any of the playing right. once in a while maybe. But but I, I could see myself going and hanging out and ju- yeah. uh, checking out this game and, you know, uh, doing some uh, some digital to dice stuff there and reporting yeah. on it and, you know, maybe doing some, you know, writing for the, the magazine for S.T. Patrick or something like that about yeah. my experience. But, um I, you know, I wouldn't want to be, you know, kind of tied down to a, a, a game or a table or something like that. I just like to bop around and see see how everyone's playing the game and, yeah. and just get get the stories from people as they're playing. Yeah. Just what's your story? What's your story? You know, where are you from? And in in the right, whole bit, right. and that's where I would get. My, I would probably have more fun doing that than sitting yeah. down trying to play. Yeah, you you nailed it exactly right on the head, Dave. I mean, the fun. The, some guy, like a few of the guys go and try to win, but maybe the majority, only one guy's going to win out of like 70, you know? Right. Um, but my favorite part is when I sit down, total stranger I'm usually playing against. He pulls his cards out, I pull mine out. We start talking, like you said, it's like, where are you from? Where When do you start playing? What teams do you like to play? And we talk about like like 10 different guys, and you 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 hear 10 different stories about like their app or however they like to play games. Like Ogar, for example, he'll be down there. Like he's down there most of the time. Uh, he doesn't play in a tournament. He's there playing football. He's talking about football. He's showing football games off. So that's his baby. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That should be fun. Yeah, it's um, a good time. But yeah, what are you guys playing? Ron, go ahead. Yeah. What are you playing, Dave? All right, I'll go. Um, I've been doing a few different things, actually. I mean, in between my gaming paralysis, uh, I've been doing some camera tests. And so I've been playing some APA Basic and some Strat Basic. I was so disappointed there was no no hitter last night. Yeah, I, really I know. Tell you how disappointed I, I was. That about first that. night I was trying out this camera setting, I did. I What was I? Was I playing? Was it Strat? Yeah, I believe it was Apple, wasn't it? Was it? Eighty eight. It was a, yeah, Apple. yeah. It was I pulled out the eighty eight. Yeah, it was eighty eight socks in the Oakland A's. The Oakland A's were really good. Ken Seiko and McGuire and all those guys. Yeah. And and Clemens no hit him. And and I was just doing it as oh, a man. test game to test the camera out. And I got into the ninth inning. And I went, wait a sec. It's it's like four nothing Red Sox and there's no hits <laughs> for Oakland. And and he walked a guy, and it was. One out, and he walked the guy. Says, "Well, is he going to get a hit? Or are we going to get a double play?" And he grounded into a double play to end it. I was like, "I think this is a no hitter." It was kind of funny that what happened. Uh, but I, I, re- I really like the Appa Basic and the Strat Basic baseball. And depending on what I'm in the mood for, I, I pull out the different ones. I really liked it. In fact, I've kind of dumbed down my Appa hockey a little bit too, where I'm really playing a basic mode of that. And I really like it. I do. Um, mm-hmm. The games are kind of flying through. I don't. I, I kind of cut out the matchups and the rare plays, yeah. just because it just stop. It brings the game to a stop, and you got to pull out the book and look at it. And sometimes it's something kind of, kind of silly that it's like, wow, I yeah. stopped. I stopped a good flow for that. So I, yeah. I, I took that out. Um, even the dump in on the line changes, which I really do enjoy. I've been mm-hmm. playing without the dump ins and just going with actually I'm using the hockey bones style of line yeah. change. And where the one guy with the puck stays out and everyone else changes mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. then after the play finishes he'll change up. So I've actually scored goals like that and so you get a guy that's not used to playing. So you get a third line guy who scores the goal and the assists go to the first line guys. You know, so mm-hmm. that, that's kinda neat. So it's not always just line one getting all the points or whatever. So I've dumbed down the app of hockey, played that the other night, and I'm just liking that. Especially with the um the spreadsheet mm-hmm. that's uh that I'm using there that, that can roll the really dice for you. Oh, yeah. yeah, and that with the hockey bones too. That just uh, hockey bones flies with that thing. Apic speeds up a little bit, but hockey bones it rolls like all the dice you would need on that that 
that play, and uh, and you're done. Apple, you're still gonna sometimes roll. Sometimes there's the no time roll that you gotta right. roll again. Uh, that usually doesn't happen in hockey bones. It's all you know. This is how many rolls you need. Here they all are. You know. But those those spreadsheets really make the game work well. Um, what else have I been playing? Oh, uh, Stone Cold Hockey made it back yeah, onto the table. Yeah. I, I like that game. And That's fun, yeah. I, I hate to admit it, but I, I like the cards and dice version a mm-hmm. little better than the PC version. The PC version is great for a longer project because you can pick the game you want to play. You can even roll your own dice if you want in that. And then the computer will play the other games, as you know. Um, but I still like rolling the dice and when I get the goal I want to roll the dice to see who gets the goals and the assists and that's one thing the computer game just doesn't let you do and so I enjoyed that and I did a couple of test games and then again I'm testing out some new cameras and new setups and I, I ended up playing that um, and that was that was super fun I really enjoyed that um, what else was on my table um, I think that was about it just some of the baseball some of the hockey and I did a unboxing of uh some new hockey bone seasons that I had printed out at my friend's print shop. Didn't come out as good as drive through cards, I don't think. So drive through cards still are the top of the line. Um, mm-hmm. They were a little less expensive than drive through but I think the, the, the drive through quality is much better. But it's one of these things I, I figured I'd give it a try and see how it come out. So uh, hockey bones will be back on the table. So I went through a big... Uh, Big golf thing with the Apple Golf, and I played a lot mm-hmm. of that. Not so much on the channel, but I, I played a little bit of uh, the Apple Golf. I still like it, and I'm going to probably order a couple more seasons. I mean, uh, courses probably. I want to get that Pot Three course. Is what I really mm-hmm. want to get. That looks oh, that's cool. fun. Yeah, yeah. That uh, that, that looks like, uh, that'll be a good way to learn some of the game too. Because sometimes the the Par Fives with all the little tiny little boxes you're trying to follow along. It's oh my god, oh, yeah. my, my eyes are killing me. But the Par Threes and and Fours are good with that. Uh, I I want to pick up the. Um, uh, what are the, the amateurs? I want you know mm-hmm. the, the the old handicaps. You know, <laughs> yeah. So uh, you know whatever the handicap is. So I want to see how how they do some of these courses. You know, you know what's uh, funny about that? There's actually a result on those cars where you whiff, <laughs> like you actually swing and miss. <laughs> oh, <laughs> is there a barking result. card? Uh, it probably yeah. His swing. I think he got better. His swing used to be bad though, but they you can whiff and I. No, use those amateur cards. Oh man, yeah, oh, uh, I have to get those now. Yeah, and so I think I'm going to get the par three course. I think I might pick up um, the Scotland uh, birthplace, and yeah. uh, and I don't know if it was you or someone else that said pick that up and just don't use the wind and just. Push. Oh, it's easy. Yeah, and, it's and easy, easy, easy without yeah. the wind. Yeah, and then, yeah. then at some point I'll add all the, the windows. I've I've been kind of slowly working in some of the stuff in the Apple Golf, but um, yeah, I went hot and heavy in the Apple Golf for a while, and then I I went back to my baseball. I really enjoy my base my basic baseball. It's just kind of fun. Um. And then the hockey squeaked way back in. So that's kind of what I've been playing. Uh, Ron, what about you? Let's see. I started, um, we've been trying to figure out a way to make, uh, trying to get some OOTP project to work for both those who are new to sim gaming, which is what the whole perfect team thing is, um, and more of a, of a GM project. Because the perfect team goes so fast, you're done in a week with the season. And you really just can't show one game per year. You know? And because it's early in the week, you're doing a game in April. And that's, that's your game of the year. You know, it's like, no, that's not, not it. So I started, we talked to David and I talked about it. And Brent DeHart and I talked about it. And so I just became a GM of a team. And what I did was I just kind of tested three or four different scenarios. One was kind of matching Tebow's shirt that he's on, wearing um, the 79 Expos. I think I looked at the 05 Nats, um, like the 78 Red Sox, 77 Red Sox. And they weren't really good financially stable teams, or at least the draw wasn't. And you don't want to struggle too much. So I did the 98 Red Sox, which is Pedro's first year in Boston. And, okay, there's some flexibility there. I can build something there. And so that debuted Monday night along with their opening game against Oakland, downloaded all the uniforms, downloaded all the 3D stadiums, downloaded the the picture packs, went well. Pedro won. And uh, first thing I did was trade it for David Ortiz. So Shea Hillenbrand, no longer in the Red Sox organization, Goodbye. Now, um, when you did that, did you have to put in like uh, you know commissioner mode and allow everything? No, really? no, no, no. I'm actually I'm playing this legit, oh. as in I'm not. I I can't be fired. 
That, that okay. So they've separated that out now. I don't think that had been the case in OTP before. Someone will correct me if I'm wrong. That you could run in commissioner mode and, and, and just be the overseer of everything and not get fired. No, they can't fire me. I can leave on my own accord, but but um, the Red Sox cannot fire me. Um, but no, I didn't. I actually went off before I did that first stream. He's with the Twins, so I just you know popped him up on the Twins in the trade screen and said, "What do you want for him?" And the choices were Nomar, Shea Hellenbrand, and somebody else. And I went, "I'm never. I didn't like Shea Hellenbrand. What he was on the Red Sox? That's <laughs> not anything there. And besides, the Red Sox is Mo Vaughn's last year, so I don't have to play Ortiz if I. You can sit in the minors. The minor teams are correct, by the way." Oh, nice. So I've got Jason Veritek in AAA and yeah. Derek Lowe and Trot Nixon. And so it's a pretty good club coming up. So we're going to play with that for a few weeks, let some people make some decisions for me when people want to be re-signed and just try to be interactive with that. I found that the, uh, when I played either OOTP or Franchise Hockey Manager that I really did have to put on commissioner mode and, and the forced trade option because the game just wouldn't make a trade. And even if you offered somebody yeah. – very fair, very equal. They wanted, like I say, they they wanted Bobby Orr for a mid level player, and it'd be like, right. you know, come on, you know, or hey, I want to, you know, Pedro for a backup second baseman. It just felt like that every time I went to negotiate a trade, I felt it was fair. And so finally, I said, okay, this guy is going to play in my team. I'm just going to force the trade and make this right. happen because this is my sandbox. And I tried, yeah. I tried it your way. I did. I tried it your way, and you made it so difficult that it just wasn't. And fun, so I'll be very here you go. To, <laughs> yeah, I'll be very curious to see what the computer does for trades because once you go into GM mode, as opposed to the strict replayer mode that, that the three of us do a lot of, or stock replays or, or whatever, it's all fictional now mm. because play once we get to the draft. I'm I'm not drafting who the Red Sox historically drafted. I don't know who'd have the if Tampa because and. Uh, Arizona because they're the expansion teams. If they get the first picks, they're not necessarily going to take who they took. Just because we the players may be real, doesn't mean that players develop like that. Ortiz probably won't develop into the Hall of Famer that he did with Boston, but he's with the Red Sox mm. as long as long as I'm there. So that so doing that, um, and the streamers won their division last week, but got swept in the playoffs. So we're stuck in Iron Loop. So we're stuck in the third. Third to six levels. Um, action PC doing doing the, that replay. Where we are now into mid August. Now I'm on vacation in a couple of weeks because it's my wife's birthday. We won't say which one it is, but it says there's a zero involved. Which wife? Uh, which wife? <laughs> okay. You said you're not going to say which one. one. Not going to say which one it is. The, the the one that's asleep on my uh, butt right now. It's my wife's 12. birthday, but I'm not going to say which one it is. <laughs> which birthday it is? Oh, I thought you said which wife which wife is having a birthday. Oh, oh. I got those mixed up all the time. My, my my bad, my bad. Foul. Just because, yeah, that's a foul. Maybe you have there in Vermont. <laughs> uh, we're not that godless, okay? Um, so so, but yeah, once I come back from my vacation, we're pretty close to the playoffs. And um, Houston looks to be a pretty sure deal, and everything else is kind. Of, and Oakland it seems to be in Seattle are sure deals, but I'm not sure which order they're going to be in yet. So that's been fun. And so I took advantage of the Strat basketball sale. I already had the this game. been some fantastic sales you, in the last you few can weeks. Get that and the card image for twenty eight bucks. I mean, Strat yeah. in Action PC has been having some ridiculous Action PC's sales. Action had a ton of sales. I, 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 did, I almost picked sales, up a so. bunch of baseball season, but I, I really am in a cards and dice baseball mode right now. So I didn't want to pick up anything that I, I wouldn't want to yeah. play for right now. So I picked up um, seasons I won't play for a while. And it was to get to the paralysis section. Uh, I picked up, um, I now have Larry Bird's whole career for Strat. From seventy nine eighty till till his retirement. Oh wow! Didn't, never thought I would do that. And I also picked up San Antonio's first two titles. I was a huge fan of Greg Popovich and Tim Duncan. 
And th- those are some games that I'm going to want to play. So I, I, from going from not having the game to, I think I have 20 basketball seasons now. I don't watch basketball, yeah. but I love when that they have game. the so, sales. I picked up uh, it, four yeah. more baseball season for Strat PC the because hockey is still on sale. Thirty percent off, so you're getting you know what? Buy two get one free almost. So That's it's like essentially what I did, and I yeah. picked up. I picked up. My wife's not listening, right? <laughs> <laughs> which, which wife? <laughs> Gary saw um, the uh, credit card bill. Oh yeah. Uh, so I grabbed, I grabbed like all the Prime Jordan seasons. Oh, nice. with the first sale, you yeah. know, and you know that card, those cards are good. Um, and uh, I also grabbed with that the uh, some project I'm going to do in the off se- in my off season. I picked up the Negro League All Stars, the Japanese All Stars, the Cuban All Stars, the Hall of Fame, and the Hall of Fame set. Oh, nice. So, uh, now, th- yeah. These are all for hockey, right? The Japanese All-Stars for hockey? The Japanese, uh, Hishawi Tasakawa, the third-line <laughs> winger who scored 48 goals for the Korean Hockey League, yes. I did that with this- Stone Cold Hockey. I created Japan and North Korea for Stone Cold Hockey. And, and, I, and I put in all the names, too. I, I went to a, uh, a site that created North Korean names and Japanese names, and I, and I just typed them all in as a fictional team. And I rolled. I did. I rolled the dice to see how good the goalies would be and what the offense was. And uh, yeah. Japan is horrible, but they, got, but they got a goalie who's like a, a 10-rated goalie. It's like Martin Brodeur. <laughs> But the team is terrible. But the goalie is doing all... a new, neutral zone trap. Yeah. So I thought I had finished this game I, because in, in Strat, all the Strat PC stuff, if you don't finish it, it auto saves it. So you can pick it right up to where you leave, whether you intentionally save it or not. Oh, very so nice. So I'm playing Chicago Detroit 8990. It was when Detroit won their second title. Bad boys. I can't tell you how much I despise. The bad boys, okay, just could didn't I did not like them at all. Um, we've talked about Bill Lambeer, and for monetization's purposes, I cannot discuss what I really think of <laughs> Bill Lambeer, but he's right up there with Bucky Dent, okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the first half of that basketball game was incredible. They're back and forth, they're trading baskets back and forth, one point, two point games, and in the third quarter. Detroit just turned it on and shut Chicago down. And that team, I forgot how loaded Detroit was. Oh, yeah. They, the, on it, they won 116 to 100. All five starters had 10 points. And Lambeer was the first big guy who could shoot three pointers. You can't close him down. And again, I, I just love Strat basketball because that just, again, just fits my image of what, yeah, <laughs> thanks, yeah, um, of what basketball is, regardless of what era I play. It just plays really well in my head. And so I was talking with Dave, but when we were trying to figure out what time we could actually do this tonight, going, I got it. We, we did a show about respecting teams you don't like, and you just kind of have to tip your hat to them. Yeah, at because, this point, yeah. yeah, I understand why they won back to back championships. So that's pretty much what I've been playing. All right. Sounds like we've been playing some really cool stuff, despite talking about game paralysis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can't figure out what to play and what we have. We've really enjoyed I feel like we're doing a, a food show. It's like we're all talking about how we haven't eaten, but then we're talking about all the restaurants we went to. <laughs> but it, it does happen, and it is scary when it happens. Yeah. All right. The breadsticks in the water at the Olive Garden are to die for. Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> All righty, so we'll get to our topic at hand. As we like to say, uh, we are live with our Patreons tonight on um, our club member a club member level Patreons tonight, and we'll do that once in a while. So uh, they are in the chat room, so we might respond to them. So if you listen to the audio show, we uh, that's why we're responding to some people live. But anyway, let's get to our topic at hand, shall we? Yes. All right there, Tebow. You brought right. this topic to the table. So what did you mean now by yeah. ga- gaming paralysis? Well, it's a feeling you get where it's kind of scary when it happens. Uh, you'll be sitting there, it may be like between games, and you're sitting down, and your desk is empty. That's all. That was, I find that happens the most. Um, and uh, usually you're a like, card and dice gamer, right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh, card and PC. I play some PC too, which actually makes it worse. 
Okay. <laughs> so I have a bunch but of. But you're PC primarily games. card and dice. Primarily cards and dice. Um, you know, it just I do have a lot of PC games too, which can make it worse. But like Dave mentioned earlier about, uh, I think his wife was out of town. Um, this usually happens right whenever I have a lot of time. Now, I have a wife and kids, and so getting the house to myself is a rarity. And um, so when it happens, it's like, wow, I got the whole house to myself. What can I do? And then I'll, I'll find, well, I'm just going to watch this TV show for a little bit longer. And I'm thinking, well, I really should be cranking up some games right mm-hmm. now. You know, and then you're sitting on, well, I'm just going to go grab something to eat. Well, I always have time. And the clock's ticking when they're going to get home in like five, six hours. And I go sit down at my desk and like you look up and I got, I'm not bragging about my collection, but I, you know, I got like a hundred, you know, app of seasons, not. We, we, we've all cards. seen them. We've Tebow. seen the we've season of video. All seen them. I look at all the games. I look at the Strat games I have. I look at the replay games I have. I look at my hard drive and I see like all these icons of all these games I could be playing and you just freeze. I mean, you just absolutely uh, – another thing that causes paralysis is I look at the sets I haven't even opened. Like on my table right now, I have like 76 Strat, uh, 80 – let's see, 76 Strat. I have that 97 Strat they came out with on that bonus drop. I have a couple seasons I bought from Greg Sovan right after he passed, you know, their field day and fall classic. And they're, they haven't been open, and that's just almost paralyzed too, like – like, I think sometimes do it. having too many choices yeah. can be a bad thing. I mean, sometimes yes. it's great because sometimes I'll come down the stairs and I'll look over here and I get my 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 pen and paper games over here and I get my Apple behind me and my Strat over there and I'll say, you know something? D- d- no, this game right here, uh, whatever it is, blah, 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 blah. I, I haven't played this in a long time. And I take the folder out yeah. and I go and I say, I'm, I'm going to play this. Even if I don't play the whole game, you know, because sometimes you got to relearn sometimes. You know, you pull it right. up like, oh, man, how do I play this? Like like Stone Cold Hockey, I had to reread the directions because yep. I had forgotten how to, to play it. I mean, I knew how to, but I, I forgot about a, a certain role that you have to do. It's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. But anyway, yeah. sometimes it's great because it's like I haven't played this in a long time. It's like, oh, man, I'm glad I played this because I had, I had such fun. Another time it's like yeah. there's too many choices. You just walk in yes. and you just – it's like overload. Yeah. And you just – you're like, man, I'm I'm going to play nothing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. And, and like it. <laughs> Your collection behind me is also is almost setting it off for me, Dave. You have those app six seasons behind you there. Like I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, man, like there's so much fun there. I don't even know where to start, and I just don't do anything. <laughs> um, sometimes, yeah. yeah, yeah. One thing I do that helps me get out of it sometimes. Is I'll actually I won't even play games. I'll just pull like a, a team out, and I did this with strap basketball. Just we're almost talking about it. And I'll actually just kind of like try to rank them by like I'll try to look at this the ratings. I'll try to rank them all and like see, oh this guy's good, or this guy stinks, and this guy plays a lot, this guy doesn't play a lot, and just to kind of that's actually part of the hobby too. I think that's not even playing games, just like looking at the teams, the cards, who's good, who's not good. Um, what I found helps you get out of it, and it's hard to do is just start playing something. Mm. And then when you start playing something, you're like, oh, okay, I'm back in. <laughs> yeah, it is. It, but but yeah. So, sometimes it is. Sometimes they're like opening up the fridge and being like, nothing to eat. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the fridge is full. But this, you be a 16 year old kid, there's lots of stuff in the fridge, but there's nothing to eat. Yeah. Like, or yeah. like flip it yeah. on the TV and going through the channels. Then you go yeah. through 100 channels and like, there's nothing on. It, it, That's but, scary too. It, yeah, it's just kind of kind of what it is. I usually have my. My paralysis in the fall, it's it's right around you know September ish. It's you know summer's kind of over. What is it um labor? Is it Labor Day that labor we have? Day, yeah. That gets yeah. done, and then the switch goes off for me, and then the phone starts ringing, and the hockey season starts, and people want to play, and people need me to broadcast, and you know all, all this the work kind of goes into overdrive, and I get a little overwhelmed with that to a point yeah. where I get so much on my mind that I. I don't play, and and I'll go yep. two weeks without playing, and you know I'll be on the show talking to Ron. It's like I, I, it's been another week, and I haven't played anything, and I, and it's driving me nuts. And even when I have the time to play, I just don't play. And you're right, you just you got to force yourself, and you got to say, look, I have the time. You know, no one's yep. bugging me. You, you pull out a game and pl- just play anything. And once once you do, it's like, oh man, I mean, yeah. what yeah, was? 
this mental block is now yeah, finally yeah. broken and I'm and this is why we do this because I had so much fun with that and it's like okay now I think I'm back or whatever but but yeah. the initial what do I play who do I play why do right. I play do I go back to an old product that's been sitting there or not I mean you know it's like well I've played enough of that I played enough of this do I want to try something new uh, I really don't have the the, the the energy in my mind to learn mm. a new game, you know, and that's kind of where I'm right now is we have a, Ron and I have a new baseball game that we're supposed to be taking a look at. And um, I, I just, you know, between being sick and then the wife being away and me trying out new cameras, I got, I says, I, I haven't had the, the time to sit and give this game a fair shake. I printed it out you know, and I'm going to read the directions, but I feel bad. It's been like two or three weeks yeah. and I have not even rolled one die for this game yet i just i just can't get to it i i know for me especially with the pdf games because they require some setup um and yeah. so uh, you know i have a lot of roberto Shaviti games and just going you know opening up the windows folder well which one do i want to look at i think like, you know i, I want to do something that's out of my wheelhouse i don't don't want to do yet another game of the big four or whatever and going where do I even begin with this? What do I feel like? And if I feel like, okay, I might pull that out, read the directions, and nothing against Roberto. It's just the sheer you know, magnitude of, of what's, what's out there. And then because I have to set up a spreadsheet for it, I mean, I could write it on paper. It's not something that's going to get streamed. But set up the spreadsheet for it, go through my ball roller, to figure out, okay, we need this type of, you know, I need one of these and three of those and two of these, and they all need to be different colors. And by the time that you just kind of psych yourself up, I mean, there's nothing that that's too difficult to do or time consuming. It's just, okay, I'm going to get this all set up. And by the time that I get it set up, am I still going to want to do what it is I want to do? Oh, I think you nailed another one there is, is you mentally take yourself out of it. Is you, oh, absolutely. Is you think it's like, hey, I'm gonna go. Okay, I'm looking. I'm gonna go play inside the crease over here, cards and dice. Well, that means I gotta get go online and get set up the flipper because I don't have the cards that I use the flipper online. Right. And then I gotta go print out the teams, set them up, figure out the lines. What, what dice do I use in this game now? How do they do the power? You know, something. Forget it. And and you do you yeah. think of all the things that go into setting it up, right. and you just like do I do I really want to go through don't, all that right now? Doesn't mean you don't want to play the game, and it doesn't mean you don't like the game, and it doesn't mean that the game right. isn't any right. good. But by the time that you get through there, just to go through there, it's like oh, there's a train video on YouTube. I think I'd rather watch that. Yep. And and yeah, and so I have all these games at least with. And then there's the other thing because I have lots of data is that, uh, you know, I've got 100 seasons here, 100 seasons there, every season for this, every season for that. You know you're never going to play them all. You're never even going to look at half of them. At least when I buy the Strat seasons now because of the card image, I can at least look through some of the cards. Yeah. Josh Gibson's Negro Leagues Heroes card is porn. It is absolute DeGrom 2022 or 2021 George Brett 1980 it is just pure smut that car there there is <laughs> that one column of versus that one column on both lefties and righties is one giant home run there might be an out or two throw I mean it's just mm. but you get so much enjoyment out of just looking at that you don't know when you're going to pull it out but at least you've taken the seconds to look Jim Brown's card from 1963. There are short gains all over that, right, wrong, indifferent, you know. Yeah, but again, does it mean that you play it? Not necessarily, but yeah, Mm. but that's kind of like I have so many choices. Years ago, when I worked at the sports store, we had a little kid come in one night, six, seven years old, and he was a Red Sox fan. Obviously, he had never been to anything. All we do is sell Dame brand sports stuff. We weren't sporting goods. It was memorabilia and T-shirts and all that. And so first time he'd ever been in a store like this. And he just took one look around, and he lost it. Yeah, and you, he yeah, just pass, to, you pass out. You're like, oh, my gosh, this is awesome. Oh. <laughs> he, just did what a, he just did what a six-year-old kid was going to do and cry because it was just overwhelming. This is the most 
uh, just the most amazing thing he'd ever seen. It was all of his favorite teams and, and pennants and T-shirts and clocks, and it was just too much. And I think, yeah, I, I think we get that way too. Like, where do we begin? I can play any team I want. I get 10 different games I can play this in. And again, wh- wh- where do you start? Again, it, it's, it's, it's it's like wh- you want to go out to eat. Yeah, where do you want to go? I don't know. Where do you want to go? And you start getting on your phone, and you're like looking for. Pl- you want to go here? No. You want to go here? No. We went there last week. We went there the week before. You feel like Chinese? No. You feel like Italian? No. And and it does. That's kind of how we you do. Just go the- home. I've actually driven home in that situation. <laughs> like I just go home and cook some. <laughs> You know what? What 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 helps me get out of the paralysis sometimes is I'll I'll see a picture on Facebook or a, a video on YouTube, and it'll be a picture of like, example, Carol Vadney for the who played with the Bruins and a few other teams. I think the Seals too, and he finished his career with the New Jersey Devils. And I was like, I had no idea he finished with the New Jersey Devils. Now it wasn't a glorious finish at that point. But I was like, you know something? I need to go dig out that team and play one game of either mm-hmm. Apple or Hockey Bones or Shoot It Out or whatever I have, even if it's, you know, ultra quick hockey or something. And I need to play a Carol Vadney game, you know? And I do that, and that that kind of gets me playing too. So I something triggers it. And it's like, oh, yeah, I need to go and, and do that. So sometimes that really helps us when I go and I finally get back into sports mode instead of work mode. And then mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, yeah, this would be fun to play. That would be fun to play. Or you know, maybe you find a quick project. You know, I'm going to play, you know, a, a, a World Series or, a, you know, and I did that a couple times. It was fun. Or a Stanley Cup final. So now you know it's like it's between four and seven games. It's not long. I could probably bang it out in two days if I really wanted to, or maybe a night if it's a sweep. And and, and that helps you too. Um, but yeah, I, I, I'm looking at some of the um, the comments here from our Patreons, and uh, 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 Bernie says he gets paralyzed when he has too many products going on at the same time, and that's yeah, almost just like like having yeah. too many games. It's like where do I go? Yeah. I, you know, and you know, I there's a reason, usually a reason why you stop a project. Either a it's not fun. Or B, you just want to do something else. Or, yeah, yeah. Or, and that's what it, probably most of it is, is that, geez, I have something else I'd rather play. And, or, and then I think you get paralysis just for feeling guilty about stopping the project that you were enjoying. Yeah. But a guy spent some time with this one, and then like, uh, uh, uh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and Scott, uh, Scott's here in the chat room. He says, I think you guys nailed it. Too many choices causes paralysis. We were just talking about that. And Ten years ago, you really would have had that. Yeah, and he says he reduced his gaming collection by 80% when he retired, and wow. now I complete season products with my remaining games without the burnout. Yeah. It, 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 you, you would think that more would be better, but so, sometimes it's, it's no. I don't know, like you said about no. the kid going into the store. If, if I went into a store and they had every hockey thing available, all the teams and jerseys and trinkets, I'd be... I, I, I seriously, you oh, just I, I, where, I where do you start? Where and he, was, where I, he was. Yeah. I've gone into stores like that before. Where you walk into a store and you know, like I don't even know where to begin. You know what I mean? And it, it, it's it's an awesome feeling, but it's an overwhelming feeling. And you just you do. It's just like I, I, where do you start? You know? Yeah, there's a guy yeah, in our there. Replay forums. Oh, you guys probably know Ringo. Uh, he's out oh, in yeah. the Midwest, and uh, he's. I've talked to him a lot, you know, online about. I've actually met him at the replay retreat here in Pittsburgh, and um, he's one of those guys who doesn't. Ha- he doesn't collect. He just buys a season, plays it, and sells it. And it's just like one at a time. So it's. it's I think he may have like one or two seasons in his possession at any one time. So he doesn't have that paralysis. He may have it for other reasons. Maybe he gets bored of that season, but. Another thing I think causes it is like this is for me is like fear of like how long the game's going to take like especially on those football games. Oh yeah, you know where I don't even want like I'll look at I'll, I'll actually open up the strap PC or open up action PC football and like I look at all these seasons you got and man if I start this game I'm here for like an hour <laughs> like I'm like oh do it. ninety minutes yeah. Two, yeah. two hours I did a whole chat yeah. about that is you know was it uh, is it okay to not like a game. And, and part of it was the length that it took because I, I was going to buy some Strat football seasons during the sale. And I pulled out Strat football and I set it up and I started playing and I got five minutes into the game. And I'm just like, I just don't see myself sitting here another hour playing this. Yeah. It just stops you. It I stops just don't know what it is. <laughs> you know, I think it was the other team just drove down and scored a touchdown and I couldn't stop them. And then I went three and out and punted and I'm like, just not feeling this right now. Yeah. And 
and I'm I'm only five minutes into the first quarter, and and sometimes I get that too with uh with even action PC hockey. I'll pull it out and I'll play, and then I'll be like, holy crap! I I, I look at my watch. It's like I've, I've been playing, and I'm three minutes into the game. <laughs> it's like I'm still in the first period. It's like I I walk away from so many games like that. Even the the Strat PC hockey. Uh, I want I need to play this seventy three Blackhawks game against the Rangers, and I need to have Jackman play. And I'm playing, and then. <laughs> Uh, it just, all right, I got that out of my system in 10 minutes. And, you know, <laughs> I don't want to finish this game. And, and, and sometimes it happens because it's a longer game. You know, whereas if you pull out a, a shootout or a stone cold or even a final score, um, yeah. you know, something like that, you can bang it out in, in, you know, 5 to 10 or 15 minutes. And it's just like, okay, I got that out of my system without, again, and especially the football games because I like second season. I like solitaire pro. Um, I even like uh, fast action football from Downey Games. I really like that one too. But you're right; it, it's hour and a half, two hours, and that that's after you get it set up. Yeah. After you set it yeah. all up and figure out the teams and get everything ready to go, and then you know do a quick little refresher on how to play the game. Go now! You got two hours yeah. left. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and it did hard to pull the trigger on starting the game because you're yeah. looking at the seasons. You're like. I can't even like start this game because I know it's involved with it. I don't even want to do it. So and uh, yeah, but and it's I, awesome. But you like it though. So I, I think that's what it comes down to too. Is is sometimes that we we just psych ourselves out in the head and it's just like, mm-hmm. oh man, if I, you know. I think the other night I was uh, I was kind of tired. I didn't feel like pulling too much out, so I pulled up Digital Diamond. And said, I'm just going to uh, play the um, Status Pro, right? It's in Digital Diamond. I'm just going to put up my feet and be, not even going to stream. It's going to play offline, and I set it up and I was like. Oh wait a sec! I need to have the charts and a couple other yeah. things for this. The the on, the on base charts, and I just I just I nope I just ended the game. I was like I just want to kick, put up my feet and play, and I I couldn't do that. You know. Then I said, well, what about back to basics baseball? No, nope, I still need stuff for that. And oh, uh, and I, I did. I talked myself out of playing that night and just you know put on YouTube and and I don't know watch dogs play or something. <laughs> you know. But, yeah. But yeah. Yeah, I know I could do a breakout, like Apple football, for example. That's famous for how long it takes, you know, two and a half, five, three-hour game. One thing I'll do to break that is I'll 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 look at Apple football as almost like four baseball games. So, and I, where I'll play a quarter, that's about as long as a baseball game, go away, do something else, come back, do another baseball game. It's like four baseball games. Hockey's like three baseball games. Mm-hmm. So it's if you break it up, it, it's a little bit digestible if you break up in like digestible chunks like that, but... So just to start it, you know. Is, yeah. What I used to do with well, hockey bones, I was doing the um, the ninety two ninety three Bruins. I think I'm like eight or ten games into that season or something like that. What I would do is I would have it set up over on my other table in Studio A, where I could leave it set up, and I would get up in the morning with coffee and I'd play a period. Yeah. You know, and it'd be half hour or so, forty five minutes, and then I'd walk away and go about my day, and then maybe at lunch I'd go and play another period, you know, and then, you know, at the end of the day, after dinner, before I go to bed, I finish the game. So I get a game in in a day, but it's in three different chunks. And that was working out pretty well for me for a while, you know, because I could, I could get through a day. The problem with that is if you get a blowout, you got to finish the game. I mean, I had that with a strat, strat football game. Um, It was over the half. It was 27, nothing. And I don't like to zoom through. I really want to, you know, if I'm going to do it, I want to play it out. And I end up zooming through it because it's like, nope, there is no way in purgatory that the team that's behind is ever going to make this a competitive game. I've made my point. I've won the game. Let's move on. And I think that that can be that too because once you start to get a game that maybe is a blowout or you break it into chunks because that's usually how I do my hockey and basketball is uh, sometimes I might play the whole thing in one sitting. I know I don't have to. And that, that makes it easier. Same with the Strat football. I don't have to do that. Um, but you get a blowout, and you got a game, and I'm not going to mention any specific games here, but you're kind of fighting with the game anyway, or you don't like the game as much as, as you think you do, yeah. or the uh, flaws of the game kind of coming through because you're not because you've lost interest in what you're actually playing. Yeah, that, that, that gets put away. Yeah, if, the, if, if you're per, not having per, fun, if the game itself... you got to have fun. If the game, the, the actual two teams you're playing is not working out, then if, if you have any issues with the game at all, it just gets magnified. 
And I'm not, yeah, and, and yeah, yeah. it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, death defying right down to the wire type stuff. I mean, there are others we've talked about storylines and there might be things that have popped up over the course of the game that you might be interested. But again, not everything is going to hold your fancy all the way through. And those are the type of things that get a game put away. And again, you get paralysis that you might like the sport. You might not like the sport. Like, ah, oh, really? I don't want to go through the hassle. I want to go back to the day. Something Dave mentioned earlier about like uh, being uh, super busy helps you get in, you actually get more done gaming wise when you, you're pressed for time. I used to actually track like how many games I played a year of APA. And when I, my kids were younger, they're a lot more demanding. Now they're kind of out of the house now. My son's in college. My daughter's like almost 15. So I don't have to be with them watching them, making sure they're not running on the street, you know, right now. So, um, what I've found that's happened, I was getting a lot more games in when I was super duper busy coaching their teams, running around town. I was getting about 20 games a weekend. And I don't wow. know if it's because my time was so precious. I really you just, I did not you waste made, you made time for it. I made time for it. And I've noticed my games, I was about 20 a week in App Masters. I was down to like 10 a week now. And it's just, I think it's because I have more time, really. It's I, just, I think that's, that's I think that. You're right. When when you're busy, at least when I'm busy, I'm I'm more I'm I'm go go go. I'm a well oiled machine. I, I'm managing yeah. my time better, so yeah. things flow yeah. smoother. And when I have time, like this week, I have all this extra time. I mean, I'm still working, but the wife's not here, so it's a little bit quiet and a whole bit. I'm in more of a slow mo lazy mode. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And things yeah. just ta- like walking the dog now takes all day. You know, I, I got to run to the bank. There's half a day gone right yeah, there, yeah. you know, and, and that's just what it feels like. It feels like the more time that I have, well, I got plenty of time. And next thing you know, it's 2.30 in the afternoon yeah. and I haven't done anything. Whereas if I'm working, it's like, okay, bang out this and I bang out that and bang out this. Okay, I got a couple hours. Let me bang out a game on the tabletop here. I think I think you're just in that different mentality where for me, I get lazy with the more time I have. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I think that's exactly right. That's like what the, the wife's away. My kid, my parent, like, wife's away. It's just like, uh, all right, I got plenty of time. And by the time you get to your desk, I'm like, well, what am I going to do now? I, the clock's ticking and it's, you're done. So you, you also find that, okay, if you decide with about a half hour before they come home <laughs> and you pull out a game and it goes 15 yeah. innings. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Or you hurry up. You're like, oh, man, I had all that time. You're hurrying up. And then they, they, you hear them coming in the garage. You're like, darn, I didn't finish my game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had all this time. You know, what really gets me is I'll look at the clock. Like, I'll actually have, like, I get up about four in the morning and start my rolling dice and stuff till about seven when I start work. And uh, I'll sometimes go that whole three hours and, like, I only get one game of Apple Basic in. Like, how did I take me three hours to play one? freaking game app of basic and just i wasn't focused i was looking at the cars or poking around looking at youtube watching dave you know, unbox something <laughs> it's just like yeah poke around yeah i'm and, the same uh, way as if i if i have my phone here and, I, and i'm watching on youtube or i'm listening to a hockey game on the radio or you know go upstairs get a drink you know go to the yeah. bathroom <laughs> you know something catches your attention you know it's just you do you get you get distracted when you play and then you're not focused yeah. i get that too uh here, here's something else that i i think i talked about this the other day is uh sometimes buying new things get you in the mood to play too yeah. Yeah, that does. Just like this Downey thing, just what I was talking about. That is exactly, I saw your video on that. And I said, I, I was asking you guys a question. Like, what do you guys suggest for like a quick play hockey that I can get stats? And so sure shooting that, I put the order for Downey. And I was super excited. I, I'm, I'm going to get my Appa game rolled. I'm going to roll all these games at Downey. Then it's going to be super fun. And it was. It was a blast playing it. And uh, oh, that yeah. buying it did get me. It did spark it. They're like the cu- curiosity and excitement of something that you haven't done before. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And especially if it's from a company you haven't bought from before either. Yeah. Because, and the you know, you, package you, you, comes in the nice little yeah. bag he gives you, and the the new dice he sends you, and everything. So, ooh, this is, oh, this is nice. exciting stuff. So. I usually get the PDFs from them unless it requires fast action cards like uh, the fast action football and the back to basics. It requires fast action cards. So uh, th- that's when I 
buy from them. But usually if it's just, you know, just charts and dice, I'll, I'll, like the final score doesn't give you stats. It just gives you a score. The ultra quick mm-hmm. hockey does give you the, the stats. So that's the way to go with that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll just, I'll just print them out usually. So I, I didn't know they sent you dice. That's kind of neat that they, uh, they, yeah. s- they send dice over with that. Yeah, he sent like a really nice dice too, like translucent dice. Yeah. It's pretty cool. But I, I was just like I say on today, I was unboxing some of my my um, new printed uh, hockey bones, and, and I'm I'm looking at the guy. I'm like you know, I bought it for certain reasons so I could play certain teams. But then you go through it, you're like, oh, I think I'll play this team, and I think I'll play it. And now you have all these fresh teams and players to play. It's like, oh, I didn't know so and so was on this team in this year. I need to play a game yeah. with him. And now all these new products fill your head. You know, yeah, some you'll get yeah. to, some you don't. But I think the idea of buying something new, uh, that that just kind of, like I say, it's, it's refreshing. It's like shiny and new, and it just gets you excited about it. And just a palate cleanser, if you will. Yeah, I, th- I think that might be it. It's just the idea that, you know, now I can play something new, something different, a different season or a different mm-hmm. game or something like that. Sometimes it's just a season. It's all it takes, or a new, like I said, the golf course, a new golf course, or something like that. But most of the time, right. it's seasons for me. It's like I'm gonna go, okay, I'm gonna pick up this, and you know, and and then you, like I said, I picked up the um, the 1988 Apple baseball season there, and I was gonna mm-hmm. play uh, probably the World Series, just gonna play that out, and mm-hmm. um, and next thing you know, I pulled out a couple of teams during a test, and I got a no hitter with Clemens, you know, over the A's, and it's just I wouldn't have got it if I didn't have that season. Good, you know? good, good luck getting the doctors to win that series if you ever do do that. Oh, uh, yeah. I will Their get to that. It's pretty good, but they They're, can't yeah. hit. <laughs> no, no. So, what was, oh, yeah. Speaking of Audi, before we before this gets lost, um, notice to people who run Facebook groups in the community who consist on keeping them public, the amount of spam that gets through those sites is getting ridiculous. I reported two tonight. I report three a day. Yeah, to, to, I reported two tonight and said something. If you're, I understand that that it takes work to do this, and I know that people are shorthanded and all that. But for the love of Saint Peter, it's time to make those groups mm. private. Someone asked me to do that with the Apple Hockey Group. Yeah, we'll be glad. We'll be glad to help with that in yeah. any way we can. But you don't want your groups, especially if you're promoting a game, to be over. I mean, tonight it was car detailing and something else. I mean, it wasn't vulgar or anything. Yeah, but it's but it's, it's weird. Really yeah, I'm the same way. Not. I didn't want to do it actually because I was like, well, I, I want people to find the group. I don't want to make it private, you know. But I made it private, and I'm still getting one to two people joining a day. So it's not like nobody can find it. You know, they're still finding it. You can find it. a group, but you can't openly post something yeah, on a group. Yeah, the Donny the Donny one is the worst, and the season ticket is probably the second worst, where it's like, oh, buy this T-shirt, you know what I mean? Or, or get this new greatest. It's and like you think, If you're looking real quick, you're not realizing that what we did for Digital to Dice was we put a couple of questions in. So you, you have to answer, although if you're – I'm kind of lax with that, but we want to catch the people who just want to sell their stuff. Right. Primarily, you know, we're never going to reject if we think that you're a legitimate person. But again, it's time to make the just because your group goes private doesn't mean that people can't post. It's not anything against for the people in the group. It's just to stop the spam. Yeah. And Ron, you know when the Russian models join, you know, like uh, you know we're in trouble. <laughs> you see all those like there's a uh, spam uh, Facebook uh, models and yeah. hey, be my friend. You're like, not no. into like replay baseball, you know? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. It no, is frustrating because no. you look at it and you're like, what, what? you know, you get a notification. Oh, somebody posted in this group. You can go there and you're like, what, what is this? What is this? <laughs> yeah. You know, this has nothing to do with the group. And it's like, it, maybe it does, but I, I don't know. Like, some guy, somebody was selling tickets to the, uh, the Arizona baseball team like five days in a row. I'm just like, okay, this, I, I, at first I thought it was, well, maybe someone in the group that has tickets just couldn't go, trying to be a nice guy. You know what I mean? But, yeah. but five days in a row, I'm like, okay, this is not someone that just has tickets and, you know, whatever. This is something well, else. Well, it's enough of a problem on Facebook that if you put a, a link into a comment in a lot of the groups, it holds it as spam. And then, you well, why wasn't this posted? This obviously wasn't spam, and you go and dig it out, and you post it, and eventually just say, that's Facebook's doing. That's not yeah. anything that we're doing, but just because link spam is so rampant on Facebook. Mm. So that's a good, yeah, good suggestion. So if you're in a group or running a group, please uh, 
either make it private or suggest to make it private because it will cut down on a lot of that stuff. Yeah. It really will. So uh, anyway. So, so do we want to wrap this up here? Do we want to wrap up our paralysis talk? Any final thoughts? Ron, why don't we start with you? Any final thoughts? I, I, again, you know, I think to get out of it, a good YouTube rabbit hole will get you into the greatest runs of uh, Gary Bell or, or – Gary Bell's career or the, the greatest base hits of Bartolo Colon or something like that. They'll go, Oh wow. He did that and to get out of it. But yeah, I honestly think because we have so many choices that that's part of it. And just the time to set something up. And again, ah, I really don't want to take a half hour to do this. So, so those I think for me are the two most common things is set up, is set up time and, my God, how many pairs of green pants do I have? Because mm. I think that's a lot of it. Mm. Tebow. Yeah, you know what does it for me to get uh, going is get moving on. Pro- I like to complete projects. I know, I mean, a lot of guys have different opinions about completing full seasons and everything, but um, I like, I like, I'm a big goal setter. Like, um, like, for example, with this run I had recently, I was I said, okay, I'm going to play. This is with a sequence of games. I'm going to play one game app of hockey. I'm going to play one game app of football. I'm going to play one game app of soccer. I picked the teams out, and I got the teams out ready to go. I'm going to go one game app of baseball. Then I'm going to play my league games, and that's going to take me till through Sunday. And it was, it was like, that was my goal was to get through all those games by Sunday. And next week, I want to play 20 games of my baseball project. You know, just – Goal setting and kind of having it in front of you. I kind of like predetermine what I'm going to play. Kind of like those ESPN talking heads. You ever watch like Tony Kornheiser and those guys? And they're you could see the next subject that they're going oh, to be yeah. talking about. Oh, yeah. yeah. And like, oh, okay, they're going to be talking about this subject next. Like, I, That's kind of like what I have going on right now. So this is my cue of games. I know other guys kind of do this. I know Bernie does something similar with his yeah. all his projects he has going on with the Red Sox. I think for myself, I think um... – that it's it's natural to take a break with with playing the games like anything yeah. else is you know you, you, you tend like I said I just binged some Netflix this week I haven't done that in years but there was a show that I wanted to watch and I watched it and I binged it like in the wife's away so I had the TV to myself and could just watch what I wanted I, but I think it's natural that you know especially in the summertime you know you get good weather so you tend to be outside a little bit more yeah. you know today I cut the grass I haven't done much grass cutting but you know I was outside cutting the grass which means I wasn't playing you know tomorrow I'll do some weed whacking and some other maintenance so that that'll, that'll take me away from gaming so I, I think it's natural to take a break and I know we love to play these games and we it, it's an everyday thing for a lot of us uh, but you know, getting a, getting away, it's just it's probably just a natural part of life that we do get away with it. And sometimes it, we get away with it for days or even even weeks before we get back to it. Uh, but I also keep in the back of my mind that as frustrated as I get that if I haven't played anything, that I know that, that this will pass. And yeah. at some point, I will sit down and I will play. And if, if history repeats itself, I will play some games and I will just just completely melt into the game and be like yep. like sitting in a nice hot tub. Oh yeah. man, good to be back. You know that that's kind of um, how how I look at it is that it's frustrating and you don't know how to get out of it sometimes. But when you finally do and you get back into it, it's it's like oh man, I missed you. <laughs> I missed you. Yeah. I, do. I so missed yeah. you. And so I know in the back of my mind it will end, and it will end good, and I will be back playing, and I'll be back you know, better than ever. And um, But during the paralysis, it, it is very frustrating. It is. Yeah, it's scary, but like you said, it, go, it goes away. <laughs> so we want to know from you, the listeners out there, you know, have you had a gaming paralysis? What caused it? How did you get out of it? You know, what are some of the tricks that you use? Uh, when it, and, and again, you know, is it too many games? Is it not enough games? What is it? Is it just busyness? Is it work? You know, what is it that causes your game paralysis? We want to know. Uh, l- let us know. Um, either on Facebook or, or YouTube, wherever you like to comment, let us know. And, um, cause we're interested to see, I want to see what other people's uh, experiences with that. So shall we wrap this up? Yes. 
You have been listening to the Digital Todays podcast. This was episode 187. We talked gaming paralysis, and we had Jules Tebow on as our third chair today to talk about that. Ways to get a hold of us, uh, digitaltodays.com is the website. That's where we put up all the shows, and we list all the guests that have been on the shows as well. 978-751-DICE, 978-751-3423 is the text line, digitaltodays at yahoo.com is the email and again this is digital T-O dice that's how you find us it's not the number two it's the word T-O facebook.com slash groups slash digital to dice and if you'd like to be a Patreon and if you were a Patreon you had free access to this one before everybody else and got to chat with us in the chat room over on look pa- live. Yeah, yeah we were live with our Patreons tonight our club members uh, patreon.com slash digital to dice there are two tiers that you can help us out to help um, pay uh, some of the costs of the show all righty uh, Ron Thanks for coming on again. As always. Tebow, thanks for a great topic, and thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Uh, great talking to you guys, as always. <clears throat> All righty. And, and community. Yeah, and everybody that was in the chat, thank you so much for coming in tonight and supporting the show, and we'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. See you guys. <laughs>